that is better. Okay, all right. Then, then I won't do that. Uh, but I won't be able to sign as much. So what I have to sign, I'll have to put it down. And then, okay, you know what? I don't have to have a holder up here. That's what I'll have to do. I'll have to have a volunteer to come up and hold my bike for me. That would be a really good idea. Uh, well, well uh, tonight, we, I can come up and talk to you. I don't have any cool jokes, so I, 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 don't, I don't have any cool jokes. I really don't. Um, and, and you know what? Uh, you know what? I do. I actually do. Yes, I can tell you one. Okay? All right, because your pastor set this all up, so I got to do this, all right? So, there's the lumberjacks that went out, and they were, they were chopping down trees, okay? They were chopping down trees, and they would yell, Timber! The trees would fall down, and they kept going through the forest this way. Finally, they got to a tree, and they were chopping it down, and they yelled, Timber! And it didn't fall down. So they chopped some more, and they yelled, Timber! And it didn't fall down. So finally, they went away, and they went over there, this one guy, he was, he was an expert at trees, and they talked to him, and they came back, and they explained it. You know, we chop, we chop, but we yelled, Timber, and it doesn't fall down. And he says, And the tree fell down. <laughs> Now, down jokes because those are really cool. But tonight I won't do that. Not, not, not for right now. Um, you know what? Let's, let's start off with, with uh, prayer. So I, I, want, I want to do this. And, and the reason I want to do that is start off with prayer is because oftentimes when people say, let's pray, what do we do? We both our hands and we bow, we close our eyes and we bow our heads. Well, tonight we don't have to do that because we're going to pray and you keep your eyes open, okay? All right. So let, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks because you are the one who made us, you are the one who saves us. Lord, bless us as we join together to learn about you and your work with deaf people. Please, Lord Jesus, guide us, give us your wisdom, your strength today and always. We ask in your holy name. Amen. Now, I, I am serious. I'm going to help. I'm going to come up and help me today. Yeah, come on. Um, I'm going to have someone to come up and hold this because we are going to do some signing tonight. And I'm hoping you ladies will do this with me. So first of all, yeah, you can hold it right there. There, there, there we are. Cool. Now my hands are free. Now what I want you to do is, is we are going to learn some really simple phrases tonight that you guys will be able to use tomorrow. Are you ready? So everybody's getting for this? Now, all right, cool. So put your hand down in front of you, and hopefully you know the first sign. What you're going to do is put your middle finger out like this. This here is called your feeling finger. So like the, 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 the one of the words we have is rejoice. Right? And so this is how you do the plucking of the heartstrings. And so when you're going to do rejoice, you just do like that. So when you're plucking them. That's rejoice. And so you and I are going to rejoice together. Well, when you say, take the same hand sign and you take your right hand and you touch it into your left palm, and then you take your left hand and touch it into your right palm, what you're doing is you're drawing the picture of touching the nail holes in Jesus' hands. And so you're touching the nail holes, and so that's the sign for. Jesus, yeah. And so what you're doing when we're signing is you're drawing a picture. So now Jesus is the first one, and the second one's really easy. All of you know how to do this one. You know how to give each other a hug, right? Everybody hugs. And so if you give yourself a hug, that's the sign for? There, oh, there you go. Cool. Cool. And I tell people it's really easy, because you and I as Christians as Lutherans, we should do this. Jesus loves, all right, and take your finger, and go like that. Me. See, that's really easy. And so that's why you and I are here tonight. And I want to start off with that because if I were to put up something like this, yeah. no. you, know, you understand what that is? Uh, I, I think you should read that again and again and finally you'll understand what that is, right? Well, the, the, the problem with that is that that's how you, that's how you do Jesus loves me in Wittich. In John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world. That's John chapter 3.16. You, 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 could, could you understand that someday? No. no. Yeah, no. And see, that's why I, 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 I like the pastor led the devotion tonight. He used a lot of words in there that, that if you go back and read these words, that people would have no clue what they mean. For example, and I, I'm, you can say right there. I was going to say, Tia, I'm gonna go he's going to make you hold that the whole time. <laughs> Are you ready? Right? Yeah, you're good. Okay, fine. Right. Oh, oh. Now, now, she is my helper tonight because um, of her, she, she's going to be moving down to Madison soon, and she is like me. Her dad is improving. 
And you know what that means, right? See, see, in, in that ministry, you don't put it as a negative. You know, your, your, your hearing is not going down. That's a negative. You got to change it to a positive, and so your deaf is improving, right? Yeah. It sounds better. And, and so we do a lot of that. Well, if you pull up your, your devotion for that, as we are doing this, you know, like, declare them, declare them guilty, oh God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. I have never signed intrigues. If you ask the deaf person what intrigues me, they would have no blood clue. It would be like reading this right here, and you could read as often and often as you wanted, and, and it still you would not understand what it means. And that's one of the first things you got to understand when working in deaf ministry is deaf people do not like English. <laughs> they don't read English. What they do is sign it. And so the next one, you have, you have the technical I have to <laughs> So, so this is one of the things. You you have to understand is because that's a really easy one, right? You, you know, um, that's pretty easy, right? But do you know what? Why? Why that's so hard is deaf people can't hear, which means there is no way they can learn how to talk to you. There is no way a deaf person can learn to communicate with you. That's the problem with being deaf. This communication actually goes one way. In order to be able to communicate with a deaf person, you guys have to learn how to sign. sign. Yes, and that's, that's where a lot of people get mixed up because they think, you know, well, deaf people, they should be able to read English and understand English. Yeah, and not so much. No, it, it doesn't work that way. Most deaf people hate reading the Bible. Not because they hate God's Word. But it's because the, the, the vocabulary we use in the Bible is, is really foreign. For example, the words on, on the night in which he was betrayed, right? When you do the Lord's Supper, on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. If you sign on the night in which he was betrayed, it signs on the night that Jesus betrayed somebody. And so when we sign it, we have to change it to on the night that Judas betrayed Jesus. And so you have to change what it means. And so that's why you can't just take our liturgy and, and, and say we can make it in English and everybody understands what it means. It, it, it doesn't work that way. So I, I want to keep going. Um, if you're in a wheelchair, you have a hard time moving. But you can still talk with people. It doesn't cut you off from people. When you're deaf, the problem with deafness is it cuts you off from people. Because you can't communicate with them because you guys have to learn how to sign. And as you know, through tonight, you're going to really learn a lot more about this one. Um, and we talked about that one. Signing is not English. So let's, let's practice what we just signed. You ready? We got, we got to do this, okay? All right, you know what? That's real easy. The next one we're going to learn is the first sign is always the same. Jesus, the second one for this is the same. Is love, but I want you to take your finger and I want you to go like that. Yeah! See now, see, that's what one thing you gotta realize is directional. And I can sign up here and I can so and I'm talking about you guys, or I can go. Or I can go. <laughs> oh now, now one of the things you're gonna practice tomorrow is what I want you to look at the person next to you and I want you to sign it like this. <laughs> But you gotta watch your expressions. 
So tomorrow when we're talking with these ladies, I want you to watch your expressions. So I want you to do this, okay? You're going to practice a little bit today, okay? I want you to practice. Give me a happy face. Okay? All right? Now give me a frustrated face.
Yes, go. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Okay, we're waiting for some more people back there yet. We're doing that. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Now, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that. They're here tonight, but they're going to be here tomorrow. We're going to have our interpreters here tomorrow. And so I want you to practice some of what you learned tonight so that when they come, you can tell them that. All right? I want you to be able to do that. All right, let's keep on going. Yellow papers. Uh, one of the things I want you to explain about tomorrow is that church interpreters are, are, are more than interpreters. Meaning, when the interpreters come here, um, they actually have to convey what's happening like a minute or two behind what the speaker is saying. You guys realize that, right? So, so when they, it's different than signing. Sometimes people say, oh, we just need a signer. All right, no, if I'm, if I'm talking to each other, we're signing. But if you're talking whatever somebody else is saying, you are interpreting, which is a whole different skill. And a lot of people don't think that we just got to get somebody who signs, and, and that'll be good. Yeah, no, it doesn't work so good that way. Okay, let's, let's just go through the, yeah. Now, now, that's why I just talked about signing versus interpreting. Go to the next one. Um, this one is very important. Interpreting is the bridge between two worlds. But if you do the next one, it's actually the bridge between three worlds. Because you have the hearing world, which is which is all made up of, of, of you guys, and you have the deaf world, and you have to bridge those. But when you're doing Bible words, you actually have to go across three worlds. All right, I'm, I'm going to hold it for a second. You're going to say that for a while. Okay, um, think of this. If I say the word elephant, what do you think of? Yeah, yeah, you think of this thing with the elephant, with the going down like that. Okay, if I say the word righteous, what do you think of? Yeah, how do you have a picture of righteous? You know, and so we have a lot of words like this, sanctification. How do you, how do you put sanctification down? You know, you know we have, so, so not only the interpreter has to do the hearing world and the deaf world, but she also has, he or she also has to take in the Bible world and how do you apply that? And, and that's not easy. For example, if I say the word sin, what picture comes with sin? You know, you can, I can think of a lot of them, right? You know, uh, uh, don't burn, you know, don't, don't lie, uh, don't steal. Well, how many of you murdered somebody this week? Yeah, and anybody lie this week? Uh, anybody steal anything this week? See, you guys were really good, yeah. How many of you raised your hand? See, you guys didn't sit at all this week. Well, you see, that that's how most deaf people look at it. Church, that's gross. Yeah. 
no, you yeah, don't do that. You know, it's, it's like it's like it's like uh, you know our, our deaf people, our deaf people. You know, they they were reading Second Kings with the story of Elijah, right? You guys know the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel, right? And he challenges the false prophets. How many false prophets were there? Do you remember? Four hundred. There was four hundred false prophets of Baal and four hundred and fifty false prophets of Asherah. Okay, and so so, they got, so he's challenging one guy, 850, okay? And he, and he says, you guys build your altar first. And so they built their altar, and they were praying all morning. And then finally at noon, Elijah goes over and he mocks them. You guys know that story, right? And you remember what Elijah says? Elijah says, pray louder, maybe your God is sleeping. Or pray louder, maybe your God is, is traveling or, or on vacation. Or pray louder, maybe your God is relieving himself. Well, we, we, have, we, we use what's called the NIRV Bible, the New International Reader's Version. And one of our deaf guys was checking this out. He got to that verse. He got back and said, Pastor, that's wrong. I said, what, what, what's wrong? And he showed me that verse. And, and you know what the NIRV says? Pray louder, maybe he's gone to the toilet. <laughs> and, and, and I said, well, what does it say over here? And he said, no, it says relieving himself. And, and I said, well, what does that mean? And, well, he's resting. See, see, we have these really cool English idioms that mean nothing. And so for a deaf person to say he's relieving himself, ah! but when you say he's going to the toilet, yeah, come on, come on, yeah, yeah, you know, and then, then they understand. And, and see, see, in a hearing congregation, you just wouldn't do those things. And, and I have to tell you, if you read my biography, I, I grew up in here in church. I grew up all my life in this country church, and I, I wanted to be a pastor, and I knew I was going to be a pastor, and I thought I'd be in a country church. I could go to church and be there on Sunday. I could help the farmers out in the field. And, and when I went down to St. Louis to the seminary, I got other ideas. And my wife was the one who said, let's go find out the deaf church. She, she liked to learn how to, she wanted to learn how to sign and things like that. And I'll tell you, the first time I went to a deaf church, I didn't like it. <laughs> and why? Because it was so different. It is so in your face. Deaf people, they'll see you up. Man, you got fat. And now, if we told that to somebody here, what would you do? Oh, yeah, you get insulted. What do you mean I'm fat? Well, deaf people, when, when, when they see you, what do they notice? They notice what your body looks like. And so they're not, they're not saying it to insult you. They're just saying, wow, look what happened to you. <laughs> and see, if we're hearing people, if somebody told us that, we'd be insulted, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and so you gotta realize when you work in the deaf community and when you are an interpreter, you gotta bridge all of those worlds to help deaf people understand what's going on. Okay, next one, we gotta keep on going. Yeah, come on up here, come on up here, you gotta hold this again. Um, that's what we were talking about. That these, these interpreters, not only do they have to learn English and they have to learn how to sign, but they have to learn all these words and concepts. Which, which you know what? When 90% when, um, of deaf children are born to hearing parents. And of course, right away when these hearing parents have deaf children, they can automatically sign, right? No. No, they can't. And the problem is a lot of these deaf, these parents with deaf kids, their kids will go to school and they'll learn the signs for math. School, the Lord signed for homework, and of course, in fifth grade, they're going to teach what the sign for, right? Yes. They teach that in school, right? No, no. Yeah, I know. And so the problem is, is these parents who have these deaf children, they may have a great, strong faith, but who teaches them how to say? No one. And see, that's what I that's what we get to, and that's what I want you guys to help me. Let's practice, we gotta practice more. All right, ready? So here. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. Now, now that's okay. Let's go. Let's do the next phrase now. Ready? We have Jesus. I always start with Jesus, okay? Now I'm gonna teach you this one. You take your right hand and you place it down flat like that, okay? Your left hand goes all over, and what you do is you roll it over. Okay? Roll over. Now, the way I remember this sign, this is the sign for die. Okay? And, and, and some of you may remember this. If you did something wrong, uh, your mother may say, if your grandmother knew what you did, she would roll over in her grave. Okay? You got it. So that's how I remember die. So Jesus died. Now, you take the same handshake, you left your palm up, your right one now goes on top. 
and you clean it up. You wipe the slate clean. That's the sign for clean, but it's also the sign for forgives. He wipes the slate clean. So Jesus did what? Die. Yeah. Uh-huh. And now you can do what? You can say the same thing. Wait. Yeah! Isn't that awesome? Was that really tough? No. No! Yeah, good. good answer. Yeah. See, see, you and I can learn the basics to share with any that person. Okay, I'm going through this really quick. But we're, we're going to get behind. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep on going. Uh, because, you know, um, I really thank you guys because you and another group have, have really strived to provide interpreters. And, uh, and there, there are many, many of our LCMS groups who never provide interpreters. And, and there's a lot of reason for it. One of them is because they are expensive. Also, we have, we have a shortage of Lutheran interpreters. And you gotta realize, okay, here you gotta learn how to sign for me, okay? This is the sign for a W, okay? This is the sign for a W, and this we do like this is water. Okay? If I do water like this, and I sprinkle it, that's a sign for baptism. Okay? Water, sprinkle. Now, if I'm Lutheran, I'm going to do water, sprinkle for baptism. If a Baptist comes in signs for this, they're going to do... <laughs> ah! How many of you? At your church. Is that the same concept? No. No, yeah, no it's totally different concept. And, and so, you got to realize that our struggle is if you have somebody who's interpreting that are not Lutheran, they are not going to sign the same uh, way that you would have a Lutheran interpreter because their understanding is going to be totally different. And so, yeah, you're going to, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And, and what, what are your kids going to think? You know, we're not doing this. No, we got to do this. Yeah, what would your pastor say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't see it so so even a simple word like baptism, if you don't understand the right concept and the right sign, you're gonna really mess somebody up. Okay? And so that, that's why you go with interpreters. We got that that's why it's so hard. Because you know we we we, we don't know. And what, what the coolest thing is, my wife one time, she she was out there and she was in the grocery store and she saw this whole family and they were signing together. And she walked up to him because she thought, man, maybe, maybe you guys got somebody deaf in the family, she's going to talk with them. And so she walked up and said, are you guys deaf? And they said, well, no. Oh, really? Well, why are you signing? I said, well, our whole church is learning how to sign so we can communicate with deaf people that are coming to church. <gasps> wow, that's awesome. Yeah, good for you. Which church do you go to? Oh, we're Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> do you realize at the National Jehovah Witness Convention. For three days, they taught the whole bloody convention how to sign with the people around them. Do you think any of our Lutheran churches would have a deaf person that the whole church would learn how to sign? What do you think? <sighs> yeah. See, now that's what I want to change. I want you guys to go back home, and I want you to be able to sign what we're signing tonight, and I want you to be able to share with your people at home, this is what I learned, and this is what we can do. So you ready? Let's practice it. Ready? So you and I can say, and that's so important, because what did Jesus do? Die? To forgive? And he also?
hearing parents will bring their deaf kids to come to church. And those deaf kids, when they go, they go to church, it's just awesome because they can sit right here. Because they get to go to church, and for an hour, every Sunday, this is what they get to do. I'm sure if we had an LWL convention that way and it was silent for a whole hour, you guys would want to come back, right? <laughs> uh, and, and see, that, that's the problem. Because these young kids, these parents, they want to teach their children about Jesus and they bring them to church and they're so excited and they come and they sit there for an hour and they understand nothing. Or even if they're signing it, they're signing things that, that mean nothing. Like, you know, intrigue. <laughs> yeah, or sanctification, or justification, or, or law, or gospel. You know, even some of those signs. No! And, and so these deaf kids, they go up, and you think they want to keep going back to church? That's why over 98% of deaf people don't go to church. Because church for them is boring. It, it has no meaning. It goes way over. And, and, and I'll, 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 you think your pastor would tell the wrong story in church? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably, probably not, yeah. But we have a lot of stories like that. And that's one thing I want you to take home. Um, this year, uh, a lot of times, uh, I, I get to work with non Lutheran families. I have people who I, I go up and meet with them, and they're not Lutheran, and still I go up and meet with them. Do you know why I go and meet with them? Because a lot of times, they have no clue who Jesus is. Much less be Lutheran. We have members who come to our church who used to be Baptist, a Pentecostal, Assembly of God, Jehovah Witnesses. Why? Because they can come to our church and learn about Jesus in a way that they can understand. And, and that's why I, I, I have a pamphlet for you guys to pick up tonight. It's this one right here, and that's the name of it. It's called The Spinning Jesus. Isn't that a cool name? You know, think about it. Um, yeah, people, that, you know, hearing people, they're, they're, yeah, no, why would you call it that? Well, come on. Jesus and the deaf man, in Mark chapter 7, what does Jesus do? See, he, he, takes the, he, he takes the deaf guy aside, and you don't want to be insulted, right? He takes the deaf guy aside, one on one, so, so Jesus, understands, you know, Jesus understands that culture. And so if we stand with everybody else, yeah, they get distracted, they look over, so Jesus takes him aside, one on one, so he can look at one. And he does it really cool. Last time you stuck your finger in somebody else's ear. <laughs> yeah, I know. And what did Jesus do? Yeah, he. Why did he touch us? He won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She won't let me touch her tongue, man. Yeah. But see, Jesus does me. Jesus is really gross, you know that? Yes. Yeah, but think about it. Why did Jesus do that? Because Jesus was communicating with that guy, that, that guy and saying, I know something going on. I know something. Think about this. I, we can go on and on the whole night. Well, how many times do you spit? How many times do you water in the Bible? And, and then Jesus does something really cool. He, he says, where is this healing going to come from? So he does what? He looks up to heaven. And then he sighs. <sighs> he breathes. A lot of times people read that. And they gloss right over the, the sighing part. Well, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm going to go to the same over here. Okay, tell me. When is the first time God breathes in the Bible? He breathed into Adam and he made him a living, breathing person. So God's breath came to life in Ezekiel. When the poor valley of bones, what does God say? Oh, son of man, command the winds, command the ruach, command the breath of God. And what happened to all the dry bones? Yeah! Oh, man, I love that story. We watched the movie when we watched that. You know, how it all came together. Oh, it's really cool. And then, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, the word of God is, it's inspired. What does that, inspired, what is, what's the other word for that? God breathed. And so God's word itself, right here, is God breathed. And so when Jesus breathed on this deaf guy, he it wasn't just, you know, no, this was God's power going out into this guy. And, and, and it says he said the word epitha, which means to be open. And it says immediately 
That guy could what? He could hear. And he could yeah. And also, what else can he do? Praise. How many eyes do you have? How many have I told you you have four? Because Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be open. And so you and I have physical eyes, but we also have spiritual eyes, eyes of the heart. And that's what God opened when he breathed into him. He opened the eyes of his heart so that he could see and understand the truth. All right, all right. We, we got we to gotta keep on going. We're going to run. How much time do I got left? Oh, no! <laughs> Put it away. Okay. Put it away. All right, all right, all right. Now, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't even look at that. I'm way behind. Oh, all right. Well, well um, I, this you can take. This you can see tomorrow. Um, when you're working with that people, um, Speak at your natural pace. Talk to them. Uh, you gotta look directly at that person. When you have an interpreter there or somebody signing, uh, the, the often people do is they look at the interpreter. And you gotta look at the interpreter. You look at the deaf person, and the interpreter voices for you, and then they sign for the deaf person. So don't look at the interpreter tomorrow, okay? Just look at the deaf person. Um, um, usually, you know, you'll see us, we have the interpreter standing right up next to the speaker. Because that way you can see both. Because the deaf person is not only looking at the signs, they are looking at the body motions of the speaker. You know, what Pastor was saying up here in Zion, you know, you can see his body motions, you can see his face. We do not put me on the anger. And so the signing conveys that, so they have to see both. Um, we had uh, materials. Uh, this one here, yeah, like I said, this one I put on your paper. Um, how many of the videos that held up puts on the caption? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No! Yeah, yeah. So what are we going to deaf people? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Yep. And so, so that, that's part of, that's part of what, what, we, what we struggle with. Um, I want to thank you ladies for one thing, for a couple of things. One is because you have helped us support us to do the ABCD curriculum. And, and you're going to read in, in the, the Speaking Jesus one that you're going to pick up tonight. It, it gives you an example of some of the stuff that we've done. Also, if you want to, um, you can also look at the Deaf Catechism. Because we have a Deaf Catechism that we use that is that if you take this and you hand this to a Deaf person, this has really, really cool words in here. I'm their presence. I'm omniscient. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. So, um, so, you know, I want to thank you. We also do Jesus Science Workshops. So if you want to learn how to sign more, come to one of our workshops. And you can spend a whole week or a weekend, and we can, we can sign, and it would be, you know, you would have a great time. One of the things we're doing now, and you'll get in one of the other flyers, is tea time. And you can look online, and you can watch what we're doing. I need to teach you one more sign, because, um, that's, that, that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to talk to them people so that when they go there, um, where is it? I want you to walk. There it is. Can you imagine? Can you imagine deaf people? And, and somebody, somebody likes to do this, and I love this. Can you imagine a deaf person? Um, when they arrive to heaven, what's God going to do? You know, yeah, I, I, yeah, you go to church, right? Oh, hey, yeah, welcome, yeah, good to see you. You know, is that what God's going to do when you get up to heaven? No! no! Can you imagine, turn like this, turn like this, like, like this. Can you imagine the first time that this deaf person walks up to heaven and, and Jesus welcomes him home and, and this deaf person has never heard anything in their whole life and they get up to heaven and Jesus goes, walk home. And that's the first words they ever hear. Wouldn't that be awesome? That's what I want you guys to do. Okay, so we have one our our Lord Christ and then we're ready? Right, ready, here we go. So you and I can say, and that's so great because what did Jesus do? Uh -huh. And Jesus did what? Yeah. So I want you to know, okay, and share that with people this week. We're going to teach you now, we're going to do uh, an awesome guy, right? And, and, uh, and we're, we're going to teach you how to do some of the, some of the science for them, right? They're going to do that. I'm going to sign it with you, okay? Hey, you know what? I have to invite you to come to a deaf church sometime. 
We start at 6 o'clock and we don't get done till 10. So 45 minutes tonight was, oh, I ran out of time. But that's okay. That's all right. So come and join us, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, our God is an awesome God. Right? Yes. Okay. So come on with me. We're going to practice before we do the course.